Hello, community. Today, we want to scale our transformers, our LLMs, to longer sequence length. And now, this longer sequence length, this longer context length of our LLMs, have some performance increase. So what we want, we want to have our LLM, for example, our Jet GPT, that has now 32,000 token length, or a Claude that has a 100K token length, we want now to have our Llama 2 model a 100k token length. And we are, of course, not only focusing on the language modeling, but we also go to the vision transformers. Let's say you have a high resolution 4k image or an 8k image, and you want to understand the content, you want to manipulate the content of this image. And you know, we use here the vision language transformers. So for both here, our LLMs and our vision language transformers, we want to increase here the sequence length to unlock new application in coding, audio and video generation. So what we want here at the end of this video, you have access to a Llama 2 model, a 7 billion free trainable parameter model with a context length of 100,000 tokens or a LAMA2 model, a 13B model with a context length of 64K, or a LAMA2 70 billion free trainable parameter model with a context length of 32K. If on the other side you prefer here a chatty data set here, we have here the long context question and answer data set, and we will use this data set to train here a LAMA2 13 billion free trainable parameter on a 32K context length with some supervised fine tuning mechanism, or we go to the Llama 2 70 billion free trainable parameter model. We have a chat version with a 32K token window and also SFT trained. Let's start. So just showed you the problem. I show you now the solution. We are now at end of September 2023, and you ask, what is the latest technology? What is the best technology that we have if we have a pre-trained LLM model to go to a long context LLM model? How we do this? We do this with a specific special fine tuning. And we will optimize the crap out of everything. We will use every trick in the book. Let's have here a look. We have the hardware, we have the GPU, our workhorse here, and we will optimize the process management inside the GPU. Plus, we will look here at the mathematical formula of the self-attention mechanism in the transformer block, and we will develop a very simple but efficient new theory how to code here the self-attention mechanism. Great, you know this. You know flash attention one, and today I show you flash attention two. Plus, well, you know also Laura, the low rank adaptation of our weight tensors. And today we will use this idea to develop a long Laura or look at the research uh, literature how the long Laura is best coded, best optimized for the result of having a high performance long context LLM. Great, now you could look at both of this in separation and you optimize here only flash attention or you optimize only long LoRa, but of course we, we want here the maximum. So we go here combination of flash attention two and long LoRa. So therefore, if we look now at the optimization of the internal process management of the memory management inside your GPU, your NVIDIA Tensor GPU. We have some limitations regarding here how we can modify here the mathematical self-attention mechanism, the coding of self-attention, because the process management has been optimized for the attention mechanism itself. So using both to get the best best of both worlds, there are some boundary conditions that we have to take care of. So let's jump right into it. You know that Flash Attention 1, the original, allowed Transformer to handle longer sequence length without using as much memory or taking as much time. And you remember, 
Blizzard Hansen showed us that the main bottleneck in everything on the GPU is the attention layer, if we want to scale to longer sequence length. Since here, everything is here with a quadratic complexity. So this means that the runtime and the memory on our GPU increase quadratically, which is horror, in regard to the sequence length. So we want to get rid of an n square complexity, compute complexity on the GPU process management. Therefore, we have now flash attention to a further computation optimization specifically to enhance the GPU processing performance inside the GPU. And there were some genius who love to design their own GPU, to build their own GPU, who know everything about the inner working of GPUs. And they said, okay, let's focus here on our non-mathematical multiplication flops, the floating point operations per second that are carried out on the GPU, make them faster, more memory efficient, without altering the core principle of self-attention. Because, you know, we want to use them together. And if you do this, if you reduce here the number of non-mathematical multiplication in calculating here the self-attention, we are so much faster because those non-matmal flops are 16 times slower to compute because the whole GPU has been optimized for mathematical multiplication, for tensor algebra. Everything that is not in a tensor, the GPU is so slow, 16 times slower. But with flash attention, we reach a new speed limit of 225 teraflops on an NVIDIA A100. And this is just calculating the attention weight. So nice. There is now a way with flash attention too to be really focused and really fast. So before we go now to the new theory, let's just ask a simple question. What does a longer sequence length of our LLM mean? What is it? How do we handle it today? So easiest example, I have here a scientific article and this article is about 6,000 word long, or let's say about 8,192 token long. This is the text length converted to token. Now, for simplicity, let's say this text is now a sequence of numbers from 1 to 8k. So this is now here the list that we have. Great. Now, if we take here a classical old-fashioned LLM, we have a sequence length of 2,000 token, 2k. And what we do, if we have an LLM only with 2K, but we have a text or a token length with 8K, now we split it up in groups. So you have the first group from 1 to 2K, from 2K to 4K, from 4K to 6K, from 6K to 8K. But now, and you notice, this is the pain. We lose information. Because whenever we calculate now the self-attention within a group, we only have it within one group. Because each group processes the self-attention independently. And there's no information exchange between the different groups. Now, in a text, you hope that in the group 1, you have more or less a complete paragraph there. And in group 2, you have more or less an independent topic description there. And then, yeah, you can handle this. But what is the better solution? If you have now, and this is the next thing, we go to vision transformers. We have the same thing. We use the same methodology, the same mathematical formulas. So if we have a 4K image, but we have a limited uh, input length, we have to cut the pictures in four pieces. This is group one, group two, group three, group four. Great. Now, if we have the group here in this visualization stacked upon each other, you can still see, okay, this seems to be a visualization of a chip of a CPU or whatever. But if I just shift it a little bit you, and you get this information first and this and this and last this, and I ask you, what is it? You might have problems because we lose overall information of non-connected groups that are limited by the sequence length of our transform architecture. What is the simplest solution? Yeah, of course, <laughs> if we have unlimited money, unlimited access to thousands of GPU and unlimited time, 
we go the classical way, we fine-tune it. It is very expensive, but we go with the classical fine-tune it, the whole system, to a context length of 100,000 tokens. Wow. Great. If you are not as rich <laughs> as I am, there are other solutions. So what we want, we want that the fine-tune compute complexity is lower than n square. Maybe it is somehow linear to n. That would be the solution. So we have now to find a mechanism to reduce the complete the compute complexity significantly. And as I will show you, a research group found here the most simple pattern for shifted short attention. And this is what they call an S2 attention mechanism with shifted patterns. And they introduce additional shifted patterns. And they say, hey, we shift the start and the end point of our new shifted groups by half of the group size, so by 1k token. So now we have in addition some shifted group 1 that starts at 1k and goes to 3k. And you see it overlaps with the normal non-shifted group 1 that goes from 0 to 2k and from 2k to 4k. So we have an overlap, and this is exactly what we want. This is the most simplest solution that we have. Each shifted group overlaps with half of the previous groups and half of the next groups. And this overlap ensures information exchange between adjacent groups. You can advance this mathematically even further in shifted windows and everything beautiful, but I just wanted you get the main idea. And you might say, hey, wait a second. In your last two videos, you were talking about here this Swin transformer architecture with visual information when we compared Nougat and Cosmos 2.5. And you were talking about here this shifted windows transformer. And now we use here more or less the same idea. And yes, this is the beauty. If you understand here, for example, coming from the visual transform architecture, a specific methodology, a specific way to compute something, you can use it in any other application. Here we have language model. And we will use this here. So this is the beauty. If you understand it somewhere, it goes all over the complete spectrum. Now, before we look now at the modification we have to take for LoRa in our fine tuning of our LLM, just a short reminder, what is LoRa? You have here three videos, no, okay. two videos and a complete playlist of eight videos about quanti quantization of LoRa and the normal LoRa and 8-bit and 4-bit and everything explained. This is the video for you. But if you are a subscriber of this channel, you know that LoRa modifies the linear projection layers in the self-attention blocks of our transformer architecture by utilizing the low-rank matrices, which is generally efficient and reduces the number of trainable parameters. This is the main reason we use LoRa. But now we find something. If we use the plain old good old LoRa, for training long context LLMs in this particular manner, it is neither sufficiently effective nor efficient. So this was a drawback. Everybody hoped, hey, we just use LoRa in the same way and we will be able to extend the context length. No, this failed. Because if you calculate, for example, the complexity, perplexity goes skywards. Okay. Why is this happening? Now, if you watched my video, you understand that LoRa is based on this idea that the weight updates, the tensor weights updates in the pre-trained model have a low intrinsic rank. This is it, what we are based on LoRa. So it updates the pre-trained weight matrix, the weight tensors, of course, with a low rank decomposition, making them more efficient and fully fine-tuned. And this is the classical transformer uh, structure Lori typically adapts only the attention weight and freezes the other layers. But this does not work here. So let's find the natural evolution of LoRa, long LoRa. And this here is the scientific preprint. So just to make it very simple, what we have to do, there are two additional parameters. So 
First, if we take LoRa with the LoRa weights, the injected weights here and the frozen layers, we have to make two additional layer structures learnable. So we have the embedded layers and we have the normalization layers. If we make the embedding and the normalization layers trainable during the LoRa process, this is essential for the long context learning. But, and this is on the positive side, this embedding and normalization layers are only a very small portion of parameters that we have to make trainable. So, the classical LoRa and our now newly trainable embedding and normalization layers in the transformer architecture we call LoRa Plus. So whenever you see in the scientific lore literature LoRa Plus, you know, good old LoRa plus two additional layers made, layer types made trainable. And as I showed you, if we have now a long context length, we use here the S2 attention mechanism that coincidentally you already know about from the beginning of my video. So if you combine one and two, this is what you need for a long LoRa. Now you understand the theory behind long LoRa. Give you a very simple visualization from the research paper. Please have a look at their archive preprint. This is here our transformer simplicity. We start here with an embedding layer. This is now trainable. So we have here this little flame that burns. And then we have the classical architecture. Normalization layer, now also trainable. Then we have the multi head self attention, another normalization, and our feed forward. So you know that with the classical LoRa, this is the classical LoRa here, we inject here some tensors, some weight tensors. Beautiful. And we keep the rest frozen. Now, however, in this self-attention calculation, we use now a new mathematical formula, the shift short attention, the S2 attention mechanism. I just showed you before. And this is now the way how we calculate now the attention mechanism. And then the output also we have here a normalization layer and our classical feed forward layer. And this is it. Now, if you do the fine tuning of this pre trained LLM in this transformer architecture, you see we have now quite some additional elements to the classical LoRa adapters here that we have to compute. But now we understand completely what is long LoRa, what it touches, why it touches here certain tensor structures, and how it tries to modify them. So let's look at the performance figures. The research group showed us here clearly, and I take here three elements, the perplexity performance of the model, the GPU memory requirements, and how long it takes for the training. And we look here in blue at the full fine-tuning process. In orange, we look at the good old classical LoRa, and in yellow, we look at the long LoRa application now. So on the x-axis, you have the context length, 8K, 16K, 32K, and 65K context length. Now, if you calculate here for the models, the perplexity, if you go from 8K to 16K to 32K, you see orange, the classical LoRa, as I told you, goes skyward. So perplexity, uh-oh, this does not work. But look at our long LoRa adaptation. It goes almost parallel to the full fine-tuning performance. You see long LoRa in yellow is exactly what we want for one specific parameter of the model, the perplexity. Now, what are the hardware requirements? As you can see, the full fine tuning goes skyward, gone, 80 gigabytes. If we go now with here the yellow long LoRa, you see it is almost identical to the normal LoRa because we just have made the embedding layer at the very beginning of our transform architecture and the normalization layers trainable. And these are not two complex mathematical operations. So you see, LoRa and Long LoRa here have almost the same GPU requirements. 
But then there's also this beautiful training hour requirement. As you can see in blue, the full finding, fine tuning goes, yeah. <laughs> wow. But if you see now Laura in orange, this is here much better than the full fine tuning. Of course, we use Laura. But there's also an even better model, Long Laura. And Long Laura shows you here the best short training hour performance to reach a context length of 65K. So you see here in three diagrams, perplexity, GPU, and training hours, why this methodology by this research group, this long LoRa idea, seems so promising. Now, it was just published two, three days ago, so we have to run some extensive tests, but this is what they say, this is the performance. And the authors of the research paper tell us, so extending the LAMA 1 model from a 2K to an 8K context length required them the use of 32 A100 GPUs, which is quite a lot. But hey, yeah, you fine-tune the model completely to an extended context length. Now, with long LoRa, it is more effective, more efficient, you can now fine tune here the Llama 2 pre trained model and the 7 billion free trainable parameter model of Llama 2 and extend Llama 2 to a context length of 100,000 tokens on a single GPU node with 8A100 GPUs. So, wow, this is a really reduction in compute complexity. So here we are, this summary. What are the key components of long LoRa? We have a shift short attention, an S2 attention. I explained to you and I told you, hey, this is really similar to what I showed you with the shifted window transformer and the visual transform architecture. We have here, since we want to optimize also here the GPU process management with flash attention to here, a not so modified attention mechanism that we can use here the S2 attention in parallel with the flash attention to on the GPU. So we have a win win situation. And you remember, we only have to make two not too big layer structures trainable the embedding layer and the normalization layers. This is it. These are the key components of long LoRa, and now you completely understand here each and every component how to modify your LLM to achieve a much longer context length. Yeah, there is a repo, of course, about long LoRa. Why not? Let's have a look at GitHub. Let us have a look here at here Deep Vision Lab. We have here two people from Hong Kong, China, and we have here a PhD student from the Chinese University in Hong Kong. Great. And as you can see, here we have the repo of Long Lara. Beautiful. Here we go. Updated two hours ago. So let's just jump right into it. And here we are. So where are we here? Long Lara, efficient fine tuning of long context LLMs. Great. Now let's see what models are available. At first, as you can see here, our models with supervised fine tuning, we have here the LoRa Plus model. You remember, this is not the long LoRa, but this is the LoRa Plus. And we have a Llama 2, 13 billion long LoRa. Okay. And then we have a 70B with 32K length. Beautiful. And you have here the link. Then we have the model here with the full fine tuning. So interesting, I think, is of course here the Llama 2 7 billion trainable parameter with long LoRa with 100,000 token length with the training here, a full fine tuning system. And you get the link here. And of course, we have then here models with context extension. We are improved LoRa fine tuning the LoRa Plus here again. We have here, where is it? Biggest model here, 
is uh yep llama 213 billion long laura with laura plus beautiful so wherever you want to go i will go now here to the llama 27 billion long laura hundred thousand token length open this up let's have a look here long laura beautiful Download last month, 68 only. Okay, maybe not that famous right now. And they explain here what they have. Supervised fine tuning, fully fine tuned. Yes, of course. Again, the model. Build upon Llama 2, deep speed, path, flash attention. Yes, for acceleration. Long chat for the retrieval evaluation. Isn't this beautiful? So if you go to files and version, you can download the files and you can play around with this model. Have a look if you like it. 27 gigabytes here for the PyTorch model. Great. But what we are interested in, ladies and gentlemen, here, what we are interested in, how you can do here the fine tuning. So here we go. As you can see, long Laura fine tune Python file. You have an evaluation file, a demo file, a license file here. Beautiful. Everything you need. So let's have a really look over the code written here, as I told you by the authors. Same code used on somewhere else. Okay. We have here Apache license version 2. Beautiful. And then we have all our dependencies. We have PyTorch. We have our Hugging Face Transformer. We have here the trainer. Beautiful. Important is here the data collator for the language modeling. We import everything. We have here our PEF module. We have here our LoRa configuration, like in the normal LoRa. Then we have, okay, some specific tokens that we define class. Then we have here the class of the training arguments. You can have a look at this. Then you have a smart token and embedding resize. Beautiful. We know this. Tokenizer, and here we go now with the official training mechanism. Now it is almost the same as you know it. We go to Hugging Face Transformer, we have our Hugging Face Argument Parser. Yes, yes, yes. The yeah, the rope scaling factor is something I will have a very short introduction video for five seconds starting now. Short interrupt. What is rotary positional embedding? Well, you know, if we have here those long sequences in our transformer based models and we do not want to go to excessive memory, then in the traditional transformer, you have here the positional embeddings that provide us the information about the position of the tokens in a sequence of words, in a sequence of tokens, in a sequence of visual information. However, these embeddings have a fixed maximum length, which limits the length of the sequences. Now, with this rotary positional embedding here, we encode here the position with a rotation matrix. We use here a mathematical optimization. And this rope scaling factor here is exactly part here of these mechanisms. So when you have sequences that are longer than the original model maximum positional, positional embeddings, you can apply now a rotation matrix that will handle those longer sequences. Remember, in a circle, you always go around and you come back and you go around. And this is here something we will use. So mathematically speaking, this rotation Positional embedding represents each position as a high dimensional vector in our high dimensional vector space that we built and rotates these specific vectors with a specific fixed angle determined by the token's position. Now, this sounds a little bit abstract, but if you have a look here at the original preprint from August 2022, you find it in the scientific literature under row former. You see here exactly this rotational position embedding here encodes the absolute position with a rotation matrix. So we use here a further optimized mathematical representation of our position information of the tokens in our token sequence. 
And then we already go with load the model and the tokenizer. It is exactly what you know. You have the model and you have your tokenizer, as always. So you go Hugging Face Transformer Auto Model for Causal Language Model from a pre trained on Hugging Face available model. So you have your model name, your configuration rate, and the same you have for your specific tokenizer. Then, as I told you, you have some special tokens. Yes, beautiful. Okay, you have a barrier from indicating that you go maybe with multi GPU. And then you have your data collator for your specific language modeling. You have your tokenizer defined. You have your LoRa configuration defined with the hyperparameters for your specific LoRa configuration. And you know that you just say, hey, get path model with the model and this configuration that you define here. As I showed you in my video about when we coded here, LoRa and quantization, LoRa for bit quantization. And this is it. And then we have our trainer. And the trainer, you know, this is exactly the same as in the other videos. You have your model defined, you have your tokenizer defined, you have your training arguments defined. Then you have your training data set, you have your evaluation data set, and you have your data collator. This is it. And then comes the command that says everything in motion, trainer.train. Amazing. You save the state, you save the model, and this was it. So you see, this is from the structure of the code, almost identical how we fine tune our other Hugging Face Transformer based models. What is specific? Maybe, yes, they go here with a specific data set, red pajama. They go with here the one Terra sample. You can go there, you can have a look here at the specific data set. If you have your special data set, your individual data set, you know exactly where to put it. And you see, this is all there is to it. And at the end, for my youngest viewer, for Ben, Ben, here is a very simple explanation for maybe some points you have to learn. So when I say here embedding and normalization layers are made trainable, what do I mean with this? I mean that the parameters of both the embedding layers and the normalization layers are allowed to be updated, changed, refined during the fine tuning process. And you remember that embedding layers map the input tokens to our embedded vectors and the normalization layers simply standardize the values to a specific mathematical interval with two specific requirements. This means in detail, embedding, you know this, you have an embedding, which is a mathematical mapping from some discrete objects like words or single tokens to mathematically constructed and built embedded vectors in a vector space. And those vectors have continuous values. Then you remember vector space, three dimension, X, Y, and Z component of vectors. This is exactly it. And these vectors capture the semantic meaning and the relationship between other different discrete objects in this mathematically built vector space. This is it. Yeah, the embedding layers does this. This is the tool. And we represent now the words or the tokens in a dense vector in a high dimensional vector space. Normalization, you know this, ensuring that the inputs have a now, mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. These are the two requirements for normalization. If you remember my other videos, I've showed you. And now we do this with a tool. This is our normalization layer. And this is, they perform here the normalization on the input values. So one common type of normalization is, you know, batch normalization, mini batches and whatever. So if you wanna see an example, I ask here chat GPT. This is a screenshot. You have now a data set here, two, four, six, eight, and 10. And you want to create here a standardized normalized data set. 
So you calculate the mean, the variance, the standard deviation. You remember you have two conditions. This new data set has to have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And then why not validate here this computation done by ChatGPT if this is the correct result so that you transform your non-normalized data set into a normalized standardized data set with exactly this representation. And please note you have here a symmetry around zero and you have exactly one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five elements. And this here is the beauty of normalization for your computation. So, and for everybody, I say thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I hope it was a little bit informative, a deep dive into the new idea, new method of Long Laura. And it would be great to see you in my next video.